Okay. Roots of liberal hegemony. This is the talk tonight. As I said, you've got to start with human nature. Remember, that was my chapter two. And when you talk about human nature, really what you're asking is, what are those common traits that all individuals have in common? And by the way, this is something that the founding fathers of liberalism paid enormous attention to. Right? And I believe that if you're going to think about liberalism and nationalism, you have to wrestle with these questions. And there are two big questions. The first question is, are men and women social beings above all else, or does it make more sense to emphasize their individuality? In other words, are humans fundamentally social animals who strive hard to car carve out room for their individuality, or are they individuals who form social contracts? That's question number one. Question number two. Second, have our critical faculties developed to the point where we can reach universal consensus on what defines the good life? Can we agree on first principles? Can we use reason? Are we able to reason our way through collectively and come to meaningful agreement on the big questions about life? Those are sort of the two big issues on the table when you think about human nature. Now, my views on this subject are that human beings are primarily social animals. Uh, we're born into societies, we're born into groups, and we are heavily socialized inside those groups, both by the family and the society around us, in a really big way before our individuali individuality really gets to assert itself. Uh, I think human beings are very tribal, to put it in simplistic terms, from the get-go. It's not to say that you can't have a lot of individualism, but we're primarily social animals. And secondly, I think it's impossible to come close to reaching a universal consensus on questions about the good life. I mean, all you have to do is think about religion. Uh, do we have anything approximating a consensus on religion? Uh, can you use your critical faculties to prove to me that Catholicism is superior to Protestantism or Protestantism is superior to Catholicism? And then we can throw in all the other religions or what if you're an atheist? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and you could point to all sorts of other examples. Uh, why does it matter so much who's, who's appointed to the Supreme Court? Why do we really care about that? because we know it's the judge's opinions, the judge's personal opinions that determines what the rulings are when you're dealing with hard cases that reach the Supreme Court. That's why the Republicans care so much and the Democrats care so much. There's no truth, there's no universal agreement. I mean, there are people like Ronald Dworkin who push in that direction, but they're outliers among legal theorists. Right. Uh, and uh, even at universities, do we teach moral principles? Do we have a body of moral principles that we teach to students? I don't think so. What we do is expose students to all sorts of different perspectives. We have no agreement on first principles. There are a few things that we agree on, but even if we do agree, once you get outside the university, once you get outside the United States, the idea that you're going to generate meaningful agreement Agreement on what's the best political system, liberal democracy. Go to Russia today and ask people what they think of liberal democracy. 1990s, that's what liberal democracy is for them. They'll take stability every time over liberal democracy. So there's no real consensus here. This is my view. And what about liberals? The liberal take on human nature is that humans are basically atomistic individuals. The basic story. Uh, they operate as individuals 
in the state of nature, you know the basic story that Hobbes, who's not a liberal but laid out many of the founding principles of liberalism makes and that John Locke makes, that individuals are atomistic in the state of nature and uh, they come together and they form a social contract so that the individual comes before the social. And then, of course, liberals believe that it's impossible to come close to reaching a universal consensus on questions about the good life. Right. So I agree with the liberal position with regard to the second question, but I disagree uh, on the first question. Whereas liberals think individuals come before society, I think the opposite. Now, if you put the two liberal assumptions together about human nature, what you end up is a world where individuals will sometimes have vehement disagreements about first principles. Right? Once you agree that individuals cannot reach a consensus on first principles, and first principles involve hot button issues, you then are in a situation where those disagreements might